Welcome to the Turner Shop. Now a Turner is a woodworker who literally turns wood into decorative spindles like the legs of this chair and the backs on this chair. So this chair was made here in Salem more than 200 years ago. And did you ever wonder how a woodworker all those centuries ago would have made four symmetrical chair legs with all these decorations? Well the answer is with machines. Now the simple machines that they would have used certainly are very different than what we're used to in a modern shop. They don't plug into the wall, they don't take gasoline, but what they do is they amplify the energy that we put into them to give us mechanical advantage. So this machine here is called a fro, and although it looks like one of the crudest tools in the shop, it's actually a compound machine because it's two simple machines in one. It's both a wedge and a lever. So what I want to do is I want to take this log and I want to start prepping four different pieces for four different legs. So I'm going to split this guy or rive it into quarters and I'm going to use my maul. And the maul is made out of dogwood which is a really dense wood and it has a lot of mass to it. So I'm going to use that maul to drive the fro into the wood. And when I lift that massive dogwood mallet in the air, I've just created potential energy. So the gravity of the earth wants to pull that massive maul back down. So if I let it go without putting any of my energy on it, it'll start to drive that fro. But I'm going to add some of my energy as well. And I'm slowly driving that wedge into the wood. And that wedge is forcing those two pieces of wood out this way. So the energy has been transferred from the maul into the fro and as the fatter side of the wedge is forced into the wood, that energy is forcing the wood apart and it's running a crack all the way down. And I can drive it just a little bit further. And now I can use the handle of that fro as a lever to leverage those two pieces apart. Now the longer the handle is, the more leverage I have, but that's plenty big enough for the work I'm doing. And also, the more massive the maul, the more energy that's exerted on the fro, but I have to lift that maul. So this is plenty big enough for the job. So I can both pull on that fro, and I can push on that fro and work it down, levering that piece apart the entire time. So there we've got our two halves. So now that I've split it into four quarters, I need to turn each one of these into a cylinder before we can refine it down to a chair leg. So I'm just going to use a compass and I'm going to get the biggest circle I can pull out of that triangular prism. And then I'm going to flip it, do the same thing on the other side. So now that I've got the circles marked out on both sides, I need to get these sharp corners off and pare it down to that cylinder. And I'm going to do that with another simple machine, another wedge, but this one's keener and sharper, so it's going to do more cutting than splitting. So we've gotten our piece of wood closer to the cylindrical shape we need, but we still have to refine it a bit more before we can put the decorations into it. Now the next machine I'm going to use is called a shaving bench. And it's one of my favorite machines because I get to sit down. So what I do is I take my piece of wood that I'm working on and I'll put it under the jaw of what we call the dumb head. And that dumb head is connected to this long shaft and there's a foot pedal on the bottom. So the simple machine that it is, is a lever. You can see that it's pivoting on this fulcrum right here. So I'm pushing with my foot and that's holding that piece of wood in place. Now both of my hands are free to use my draw knife which is another cutting edge, which is also a wedge. And I pull, using my energy to pull that back to pare that piece of wood down. Now you can think of the draw knife as an inclined plane as well. When it severs the wood, 
the wedge shape or the inclined plane is lifting that piece of wood that I'm severing away from the bigger block of wood. Well, that's pretty close. It's not a perfect cylinder, but it's plenty good enough to move on to the next step. And you can see how each step, the cutting edge of the machines I'm using is more and more refined and making a more and more refined shape. Now the next thing I have to do is I have to drill a hole right in the center of both of those circular ends. So I'm using a brace and bit to make the hole and the bit is yet another simple machine and it's a screw. And when you turn it, it's going to bore itself into the wood, but it's also augering out the wood shavings that it's severing as it goes. And if we look at this part of the brace, it's got a sweep to it. If it were just straight, it'd be really difficult to turn it, but that gives me leverage, which gives me mechanical advantage. Now we're gonna turn that piece of wood into a refined spindle, and that work's gonna happen on this lathe right here. And the lathe is by far the most impressive machine in the whole shop. Lathes and the technology behind lathes have been around for 2,000 years. The lathe is a compound machine because it's got all these different simple machines. We have screws, we have levers, we're going to make a rope and pulley, and we have wedges. So I'm gonna take the piece of wood that we are working on and put it between these two iron centers where it'll rotate. But the first thing I have to do is take some beeswax and rub it on those centers because as that piece of wood is rubbing and the wood is coming in contact with the iron, we're going to be creating friction, which is going to be creating heat. So there's a transference of energy there as well, but that energy turns into resistance and it's harder to turn the piece of wood. Now the beeswax will melt with that heat and it'll make it spin more freely. I'm gonna take this rope here, and I'm gonna wrap it around this groove that I've made, and for every wrap around the piece of wood, it's going to give me a full revolution as it rotates. I could wrap it several times, but what happens is I create more friction with the more wraps, so two wraps seems to be my ideal mechanical advantage. So now I drove that wedge in, and the friction of that wedge is gonna hold all of this together. Now to rotate this piece of wood, I'm gonna take the energy I've converted from the food I ate this morning and push down with my foot on this lever, and that's going to transfer that energy up through the rope and pulley to this lever here. And here's the fulcrum for that lever, and there's a rope on the back of it that goes down to these two young trees back here, we call them spring poles. So if you've ever shot a bow and arrow, or if you've ever grabbed a tree branch and you pull it back, you've stored up energy. So when I push down, we have potential energy, and when I let go, it gets turned into kinetic energy. So although this technology seems really crude, it's the building blocks of all of the machines we use today. And all I would really have to do is put an electric motor on this lathe and it would function just like a modern lathe. So take a look around your house and name all of the simple machines that you use every day to make your life easier.